Hey everyone, uh, my name is Riley and I am the youth pastor here at Family Christian Center and today uh, I get to share with you about one of the topics um, that I've wrestled with for a lot of my life um, and it's this topic of doubt and maybe you've been here before, you know, whether you've been in the church for years or you're just new to the church or you're just trying to understand what Christianity is, this topic of doubt is huge. You see, doubt has the potential to drive us to hopelessness or push us to hope himself. You know, doubt has the opportunity to ask to make us ask why you know and uh, as I was thinking about doubt I was drawn to the story that many of us know as the story of Thomas in John chapter 20 after the resurrection of Jesus you know Thomas I actually kind of feel bad for this guy he made one mistake and yet we coined a whole phrase after him you know and maybe you've heard this before um, the phrase doubting Thomas a person who doesn't have enough faith, maybe a natural pessimist. I just feel bad because like that was just one mistake he made, but yet we coined a whole phrase after this man, this man's one mistake. But in John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29, I want to read it to you. This is what it says. Now Thomas, who is also known as Didymus, uh, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands, reach out your hand and put it to my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God, Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen yet have believed. Powerful statement from Jesus and powerful moment for Thomas too. But let's dig deeper into this whole aspect of Thomas. See, I don't blame Thomas whatsoever whatsoever this man was heartbroken completely broken he just saw the savior crucified he saw his best friend die you know he's heartbroken he's like don't give me false hope and the disciples tell him we've seen jesus he's like don't give me false hope i don't want to be broken again i don't want to be hurt again and he built up this wall saying i don't want to be hurt See, Thomas never lacked courage, but he was the natural pessimist. But we have to make sure of one thing. He loved Jesus. You know, he loved him enough to be willing to, to go to Jerusalem and die with him early in, earlier in the chapter, um, earlier in the book, sorry. Thomas is like, I'll, I'll die with you, Jesus. You know, like he, he loved Jesus. What, he had, what Thomas expected had happened. And when it came, for all, for all that he had expected it, he was heartbroken. Thomas was heartbroken. So broken hearted that he could not meet the eyes of others. He couldn't even see them. He was so sad and he just needed the loneliness. He had to be alone with his grief. I don't blame Thomas for saying, don't give me fuck, for not believing in them. I think you and I might do the same thing too. You know, maybe we've been hurt in our life before. There's a scene in uh, Avengers Endgame that I was thinking about. It's when one of the characters is trying to recruit the other character in. And the one character, his name's Hawkeye, and he says, don't give me false hope. Don't do this to me. He's so hurt. And I think maybe you and I could do the same thing too with God. You know, we've been hurt in our life before. And we don't want to be hurt again. So we build up this wall saying, no one's going to hurt me again. But there's some hope in this. See, Jesus knew Thomas's heart. He repeated Thomas's own words and invited him to make the test that he had demanded. And Thomas's heart ran out in love and devotion. And all he could say was, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, you need the eyes of sight. 
to make you believe, but the days will come when people will see with the eyes of faith and believe. You know, there's this uh, devotional by Bob Goff, and in one of the chapters, Bob Goff writes, God isn't afraid of our doubts. He's way more concerned when we fake it. You know, I actually applaud Thomas's authenticity in this moment. You know, he was real. He said, guys, I, I don't know if you're, you know, telling the truth. And I, I honestly believe that God isn't afraid of our doubts. In fact, I believe that God journeys with us through it. And God's not mad if we doubt, if we're saying, I don't know if that's going to happen. It's the moment we dwell on the doubts. It's the moment that we say that the doubt is true. That's when we're led into so many different things. But with, when we have these doubts, we have to ask ourselves, why are we having them? And God invites us in to ask these questions. One thing about me, I love asking questions. And so I ask God, why? All the time. See, God is incomprehensible. We can't understand everything about God. And so when God does something and we don't understand it, I don't believe God's mad at us. I believe that he invites us in to talk with him more, to have that relationship, to have the authenticity with him. See, we need to get real enough with God about our doubts so he can show us grace in it. We don't have to hide saying, oh, we know everything that's going on. And maybe for you, maybe for me, we've been hiding behind this whole mask of confidence. You know, when they have doubts, we, we just like, I don't know. It's okay if we don't know. But with our I don't knows, we have to go to the one who does know, and that's God. You know, Thomas provides us, the story of Thomas provides us with the opportunity uh, for us to learn that God doesn't meet us with anger when we have doubts. He actually meets us with grace. And we can go to him and when we're saying, God, we don't know, he knows our hearts. He knows everything about us. And so he's going to meet our needs. He's going to help us understand. So, friends, I just want to encourage you this week that when you have a doubt, maybe maybe you're wondering, is God even going to do this? Is God even real? You know, it's we can ask ourselves these questions. I want to encourage you not to dwell on the doubts, but take the doubts to God. You can ask him because he's so excited to hear your voice. He's so excited to talk with you about this. We get to talk with God about our doubts. So friends, thank you. Thank you for journeying with us. And uh, I'm so excited um, to hear stories of how God has encouraged you and God has strengthened you uh, in your beliefs. Thanks and have a great week.